So Heavenly Father, we thank you for our dear brother Prakash Daniel. Thank you for our friends here and those that are coming, and those that will watch this recording later. We thank you for what you've done in Prakash's life and each of our lives, Lord. We give you all the glory, praise, and honor always and forever. And we just thank you that your Holy Spirit presence is already here, Lord. And we thank you for the sweetness of your presence. And there's nothing sweeter than the name of Jesus. And Father, we really thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers each of us and the bloodlines of Jesus around us and our families, those that we minister to and fellowship with, both in person and online around the world. And we just uh, are expectant and anticipating your great move today, Lord, that, that we believe with you, God, all things are possible and that we can get closer to you even in this meeting than ever before. Father, here we are. Use us, take us up higher. Your word says, come up here. And Lord, we thank you that we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And we thank you for what you're going to speak and share and impart through Prakash, our brother today, in Jesus' holy name. So welcome, Prakash, and welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Amen. Go ahead, Prakash. Okay, yes. Amen. Uh, thank you, Dr. George, again, for uh, giving me an opportunity to share my heart uh, to your art. Um, what a joy always when we serve our greatest master. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, this is the day the Lord has made, mm -hmm. and uh, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. You know, uh, when Dr. George asked me um, to be a speaker for this time, and I was asking God what you have for this time, Lord. You know, last um, one year, almost one year uh, plus, we have been going around the world a tough time, never happened in the history of our times and season um, about this pandemic and all these things. One key point, I understand what people uh, looking for, you know, everywhere you go, people are looking for healing, healing, healing. They're looking for healing for uh, financial. They're looking for healing in their physical body. They're looking for healing in their mind, soul, depression. Everywhere people looking for healing. Um, and I was reading the Bible uh, recently, you know, I, I discovered uh, about um, uh, the the exegesis of healing uh, in Jeremiah chapter uh, 8, verse uh, uh, 22. I would like, like to read uh, uh, from uh, 18, Jeremiah chapter 8, beginning from uh, uh, 18 to 22. I would comfort myself in sorrow. My heart is faint in me. Listen the voice, the cry of the daughter of my people from a far country is not the Lord in Zion, is not her king in her. Why have they provoked me to anger with their curved images, with the foreign idols? The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the hurt of the daughter of my people, I am hurt. I am mourning. Astonishment has taken hold of me. Is there is no bomb in Gilead? Is there is no physician there? Why then is there is no recovery for the health of the daughter of my people? Is there is no bomb in Gilead? Is there is no physician there? Why then is there is no recovery for the health? of the daughter of my people, amen. You know, in this world, five questions control the world. The first one is who I am, understanding the meaning for your existence. And the second question control the world is where I am, what is the source? And some people say, I come from monkey, <laughs> bless their heart. <laughs> Why I am here, that's the third question, purpose, why I'm living in this earth. 
and the fourth question control the world what can i do you know no idea about their ability 90% dies and 10% achieves and the fifth question control the earth where i am going where i am going success is predictable it's not luck not ex experiment success is dedicated by god predictable failure is also predictable you can plan success um one of the key thing you know uh, about uh, in a prayer ministry as an intercessor not just praying but being used of god in prayer not just praying but being used of god in prayer in jeremiah chapter verse 8 verse number 22 jeremiah was called by god the bible says he is a weeping prophet if you read jeremiah chapter 1 the bible says god chose jeremiah when he was in the mother womb this chapter deals with the prophet mourns for his people you know jeremiah did not receive a pleasant message from god to deliver to his people the lord ordered him to declare judgment and destruction on judah god told to prophet that he was about to destroy a sinful generation a group of stubborn men and women who had turned to the basis kind of idolatry so jeremiah is a man is a weeping prophet who was standing in the gap in between god and people and is crying and is weeping for the healing of the land healing of the people today my message title is partnering with god you know jeremiah was partnered with god but the people israelites they are living a sinful life they are way away from god god anger came on them as a prophet as a man of god he is standing in the gap in between man and god and is weeping and crying unto god and is saying in verse number 22 is there is no bomb in gilead is there is no physician there why then is there is no recovery for the health of the daughters of my people you know one of the amazing um, song um, 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 uh, about there is a bomb in gilead you know i just want to read the uh, uh, the lyrics of the song there is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. Sometimes I feel discouraged and leave my fear away in prayers. The Holy Spirit reviews my soul again. There is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul if you can't pray like peter if you can't be like paul go home and tell your neighbor he died to save us all there is a bomb in gilead to make the wounded whole there is a bomb in gilead to heal the wounded soul you know today prophet jeremiah is weeping for, for, for his people, mourning for his people for a miracle, for the healing in the land. As today we are praying and crying to God, the healing of nation, the healing of the land, the healing of the relationship, and the healing of our bodies. And, and one of the key points, as we partnering with God, we are bringing a word from heaven and that word interrupt the earth and it changes the realm in the earth that's the key of the prophetic one of the uh, 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 prophetic um, 
um, I like in the Bible, uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 37, if you read, the prophet Anna, only she comes three verses. But, you know, the phenomenal thing about our prayer, she, she, she saw Jesus in the spirit realm. You know, God's plans are placed in the womb of an intercessor. They can cause the heavens in contract, which means as in a labor pain, so that whatever is incubated in the realm of the spirit over our churches, families, they have the ability to push these things out from the unseen realm into a seen realm. Wow, that's so powerful. And a day and night, a widow, she was praying, praying, interceding for the coming of the Lord Jesus. You know, this, this time of pandemic, this time, what crazy stuff going on? Still in, in many countries, like uh, we can see in India, wow, uh, 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 the percentage and the people are uh, uh, dying day after day. And one of the questions, it comes in, in our mind, where is God? Many people, you know, they may ask, where is God? What's happening? They have a big question. Prophet Jeremiah also had a big question. And he started prophesying, is there is no bomb in Gilead? You know, the meaning of Gilead is perpetual fountain. It means valued for all time, holding something for life. Or else, heap of testimony. Holding something for life. And I believe today, as whoever listening this audible voice, whoever watching this, the bomb of Gilead is coming into your Jerusalem, in your living room, in your life, in your family. And as you call unto the name of God today, and he's going to heal you, and he's going to restore you what the enemy has stolen in your life. It's time. The prayer is going to be an answer prayer. The prayer which you have been seeking for, for, for years. And I believe today that prayer is going to be an answer prayer. Not just praying, but being used of God in the prayer. Um, Psalm 116, 116, verse 7 and 9, it says, Psalm says, written to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you, for you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of living. You know, Paul says, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, now, that was his final greetings. Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless unto our Lord Jesus Christ come again. You know, man is a spirit. He has a soul and he lives in the body. You know, today, what is the, the major healing people are looking, looking or running the soul? The soul healing, the soul personality is mind, emotion, and the will. What is there in the soul personality? Mind. It helps us to think, and the emotion, the feelings, and the will are the chooser. These are the main things, the personality inside the soul. One of the main things the devil wants to corrupt our mind, our thinking, and then put an emotions, our feelings. A lot of people who have been, uh, I was dealing with um, um, recently uh, ministering uh, 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 people who have a lot of past stories and broken marriages and emotions. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, in this area, the label targeting to disconnect us, not partnering, partnering with God. 
and one of the uh, 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 just a, a, a story I was just sharing uh, uh, to a bunch of friends of mine. You know, the devil loves us. Devil loves everyone goes to church on Sunday morning. You know, well, you go to church, worship, speak in tongues, lift your hands, enjoy, but don't bring your church back home. Leave your church on Sunday morning on the church. And Monday to Saturday, just be with me. Just partner with me. But I allow you to go on Sunday morning to the church. Just worship. Praise God. Speak in tongues. Do everything. But don't bring the church back home. That was the trick of the enemy. That was the trick of the devil. You know, today, the Lord is speaking to someone, a new beginning is happening in your life, partnering again with God in a new way. He's going to help you, people coming in your life, and they will connect you in a new way, partnering you with God. A lot of stories in the Bible, one of the amazing story in the Bible, um, um, Mark chapter uh, 2, verses uh, beginning from uh, 1 to 10. You know, when Jesus was on this earth, he was teaching, preaching, and healing the sick. Three kind of people followed him. Some people followed to receive miracles. And some people followed to receive good teaching from him. And some people followed to find fault from him. You know, here in the this, in this story, as Jesus was started his ministry in the wedding of Canaan, you know, uh, one of the amazing ministry is, is not started, Jesus not, not started rising Lazarus from dead. It was a celebration. And Jesus' mother know, only know who is Jesus and rest of them, oh, I know this young man. He is a son of the carpenter of Joseph. That was Jesus' identity. But that day in the celebration, in the wedding, and Jesus looking at, sorry, uh, Mary looking at Jesus' face, do something, do something. And Jesus said, my time has not yet come. And Jesus said a word, fill the barrels with water. The servant did not ask any questions why this man asking us to fill the barrel with water. They just done it because the presence of God was there. It was an authority word Jesus spoke. When he began his ministry, he brought an authority from heaven on earth. That's a, that's a strong authority he released on the day. And immediately they filled the barrels and the water turned into wine. You know, we know in the Asian culture, if there is a, um, uh, um, no uh, food, people who are coming for the wedding, rest of their life, they talk about the wedding. I know 1987, I know 1978, I know 1982, I went to the so-and-so marriage, you know, there's no food. They are running out of food. <laughs> it's a shame. But what happened, the bride and the bridegroom, when they hear, they might have, the face, they might have, got disappointed. But there comes the first miracle, our Lord Jesus Christ. They didn't put the bride and the bridegroom into disappointment, but they, he surprised in the, in the celebration with a new wine. The people who are having their wine, they tasted the wine. It's sweeter than, better than the first one. Hallelujah. And you know, Jesus always give the best for us. When we partnering with him, he always gives the best for us. And as Jesus was teaching, preaching, and healing the sick, in Mark chapter 2, the story is something amazing. And again, he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately, many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. 
And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, why does this man speak blasphemously like this? Who can forgive the sins but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your heart, which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, you are to say, arise, take up your bed and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to this paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house immediately. He arose, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of the all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. Well, what I want to share in this story about God gave me a revelation by four men. Jesus forgives and heals a paralytic. You know, four men coming into the life of a paralytic man who was dying on the side of the road. The first man, who is this first man? The first man is a visionary, is an apostle, walk in an identity of God. He saw a vision on this paralytic man. Well, I don't want to see this man rest of his life dying on the side of the road. So in his mind, I am going to help this man to take him to Jesus' house. Jesus is going to heal this man. And the second man is a dreamer. Who is a dreamer? A dreamer is a prophet. What's the, na what's the uh, 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 nature of the dreamer? He teaches the dream and take you to the next level. As a prophet, he sees in this man as a future. He's not going to die in, in few days. He's not going to die in next few months. He's not going to die in next two years. He's going to live a long life. So when the prophet, as a seer, seeing this man lying on the side of the road, begging money, and he saw this man as a future, I'm going to help this man to the carrying him to the house of Jesus. Prophet see in a in a deal. And he's excited to help with the visionary man to give him a hand. I'm joining my hand, partnering with you. Help this guy to take him to Jesus' house. Hallelujah. <laughs> And the third man is a strong man. Who is, the, who is the strong man? He's a pastor. You know, pastor always as a shepherd, you know, um, it's not an easy job handling um, uh, under of sheep. Or, uh, uh, it's not an easy job. You know, the third man comes into the field with the visionary, with the dreamer, the prophet, Hey, I'm there for you guys. I'm going to give my hand to help this guy taking to Jesus. You know, what is the nature of the strong man? The strong man always upgrade us from fourth grade to the fifth grade. He teach and he preach. And the strong man always give us hope, pastors, whenever we spend time with them. They always give us hope and always embrace them. You read one of the uh, parables in the Bible. Jesus was talking about the parable of the lost 
sheep, what's the nature of the shepherd? He knows the 99s are very good in shape, very good in health. The shepherd was looking for the one, finding the one, because the worm is, might have got wounded somewhere, maybe caught in some, some of the bushes. So he was looking after the finding the one to just heal, to bring them back to the, in, into, the, into, the, into the farm, into the flocks. And the fourth man, who is the fourth man? The fourth man is a lover, he's a teacher who has the heart of the father. What's his nature? His nature is not looking at the paralytic man, looking at his identity, looking at his nature, rather not throwing words because of his forefather's sin, this man is suffering by this sinful or the, by the sickness and lying on the side of the road. He didn't judge, but rather he comforted him, he embraced him, he gave him hope. That's the heart of the father. You know, this four kind of men partnering together, carrying this man on the shoulder and leading their ways to the house of Jesus, taking this paralytic man to the house of Jesus. And as they saw, the Jesus house was been filled with the uh, people and there was too much crowd and all these things. And they never give up because they four are partnered together in one accord with one mind in unity. One might have told to another, well, man, look here. There's too much crowd. I'm, I, I have something work back home. He didn't say adios. <laughs> he didn't say I'm leaving. He, he, was, he was just pers pers persistence. He never give up. The four are in one accord. And they just went on up of the roof of Jesus' house. And there comes their stubborn faith, more than the paralytic man, their faith, I just wonder whose faith healed this paralytic man? Whether this four men faith or the paralytic man faith. And this four men didn't care about anybody and their, their mind, their, their partnering as together to see miracle on this paralytic man. And Jesus looked, Wow, what a faith. And there comes Pharisees and Sadducees. You know what they do always? They find fault on Jesus because they are insecure. They, 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 were, they were always find fault on, him, fault on him because Jesus called this paralytic man, son, your sins are forgiven you. There comes the paralytic man, a new identity is no more a stranger. He became a son of Jesus Christ on the day. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, our identity in Christ, we are sons and daughters of Christ. You know, oh, um, and I was just um, recently ministering for a, a, a church uh, in Florida, and they allow my prophetic. And um, whenever, oh, Prakash is here, they wait like 11 o'clock, 11.30, holding their cell phone to record the prophecy. <laughs> what the words comes from my mouth. And on the day, what happened, you know, I didn't prophesy and suddenly I felt there's a strong healing presence. And I started moving in the healing anointing. And I have to be obedient to God. And in the, the, my friends, you know, uh, 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 and, and they were looking for a word. But I, I didn't put my identity on my gift on the day, but I put my identity on my sonship with God being obedient. And I started moving in the healing gifts. And after that, my friend, you know, uh, looking at me, 
man, you look, you move like a Benny Hinn. <laughs> and I told, I move like Benny Hinn, man. I never use my healing gift for a long time. <laughs> and because I received a, a prophetical word from an young kid, 11 years old, and she came to my house, and I asked my friend, why you are bringing him all the way driving two hours? And I know that there is something, a word for her, and she's going to release a word back for me. And that day after I released a prophetical word for her, and she started crying, 11 years kid, crying, crying, crying. And I asked her, what do you feel, honey? I feel light. I feel the glory of God. And immediately, I know she's in the presence of God. Immediately, I, I just placed my hand like this. Can you pray for me? If, can you? I want to receive something. And her dad just looked at her eyes. Well, she said, dear, you know, a lot of people prophesied you are a prophetess. And you know, she, she looked at my eyes crying. And the first word she spoken into my life that day, you don't know how much you poured into people's life that means a lot for them. And then the second word, after a few minutes, she spoken into my life, I see fire in your hand. I forgot that many years, many months, the fire in my hand. <laughs> Every time I go, I'm just using my mouth, prophecy, prophecy, prophecy. I forgot many years. When I started my ministry 10, 15 10 years back, 10 years back, whenever I touch from people, I see miracles happening. But I forgot like my, my, my identity, no, I thought, oh, I'm just a prophet. I didn't use my healing gifts for a long, long time. And that Sunday I used my healing gift. Wow, God healed instantly many people. A, a guy who had a, 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 a no attack problem from his car wreck, and he never had that uh, problem. Numerous testimony came up. And then, I, uh, you know, and I realized, wow. That day I realized my ministry is not on gift basis. My ministry is based on sonship with God. I am not going to do my ministry because I have a gift of prophetic. I have a gift of healing. I have a gift of discernment. No, 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 no. That's not going to help me to finish well. <laughs> no. What makes me to finish well is I'm having a partnership with God and I am a son of God. Hallelujah. You are a daughter of God. That is make you to finish well. Proverb, what it says, Proverb, your gift, can make you room, but your character make you to stand there. Hallelujah. Your gift can make you room because I have a prophetic word. I give a prophetical word. People enjoy. I have a healing gift. Look at this man. Wow. They'll, it make me a room. It opened doors, but my character helps me to finish well, to keep on to stand on the gift. Many times, you know, one of, one of the uh, 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 key area, why missions fails? Why ministers fails? Why leadership fails? There's no balance in the gift and the fruit. Our gift through, so many times you work on the gifts, but we forget about the fruit. We forget about balancing the character and the gift aligning together. Here in Mark chapter 2, these four men carried this paralytic man. They partnered together in one accord because their alignment together to see a miracle in that wounded soul. Hallelujah. That paralytic man, not only he was wounded by his physical nature, but and also he was wounded by his soul. He may be think, why I am living a life, begging money, looking into the eyes of the people. He may be thinking, somebody told, because of my forefather's sin, 
I am suffering because of that. Because of my grandfather or my, because of my, my dad did something because of that I'm suffering. He was not wounded by his physical nature, but and also he was wounded in his soul, in his emotions, in his mind, in his will. That's a soul. Today, many of my friends who are listening, you may feel like you are your wounded souls. You're, you have been depressed. You've been isolated. And I get a lot of text messages. I don't know what is depression uh, or grieving after I lost my wife. The first time I, I saw my wife dying on the side of the road. And that day I realized what is life. You know, in the Indian culture, pastors know that <laughs> they won't send a, their kids the house till they get married. They feed the kid, rice in the morning, rice in the noon, rice in the evening. <laughs> and once you get married still, the parents will cry. You guys still want to go out, live uh, on your own? You guys can stay here, you know? You guys can, I can make another room next to, you know? Because the culture is different. And bless my heart, bless my mom's heart. Still, my mom's feeds cook our, 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 our whole world is a kitchen. Every day, she still get up early morning, prepare the meals for the kids. <laughs> and most of the moms in the world, uh, kitchen, is their, kitchen is their whole world. <laughs> I still remember my mom, when I was going to school, he, he prepared a meal for the breakfast, something bread or... Uh, some different kind of uh, uh, Indian meal, and then she prepare a rice for the afternoon. And when we come, and she prepares again for the evening dinner. I said, "Wow, what a sacrifice! You know, they they do for the kids, and uh, that still that seed is still interceding." I mean, one of the key thing is I met a, a, a Jewish friend. Um, he is a secular Jew, um, and and um, when we are talking about um, he flies, you know, California and New York. I said, why, why this man uh, every time a week is every month he flies. Um, you know, his dad lives. His dad lives in a nursing home. He want to honor his dad, so every month he want to go and see his dad. You know, he want to honor his dad in his old age. One of the uh, ten commandment, the Torah, we, Moses received from Mount Sinai, is honor your parents, you know, honor your uh, father and mother. He's following that. It's a principle or it's a covenant. He's doing that. This man is blessed. <laughs> Simply. And I'm praying for his salvation too. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so, you know, when it's it, one of the key thing is some people do things by principle, they they see the returns through principle through their application. But we do things because of sonship. Our returns is supernatural. Our returns is more than the principle. What the exchange happening into their life? Hallelujah, because we are not investing on the earth but we are investing into lives for the eternity. Hallelujah. This four man who carried this paralytic man, who invested his life, invested the time, invested their, uh, uh, the stuff on the day, on the paralytic man for the his eternity. Hallelujah. And I can say like, you know, um, what's happening, um, uh, well, what, hap what happened in India when, uh, when a bride getting, uh, 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 when there was a celebration, you know, the palanquins and the barrier, they carry the uh, uh, bride um, and to, the, to, to the bridegroom house. The four men carrying the paralytic man to see the bridegroom to receive the miracle. Hallelujah. Today, my friends, every day, the bridegroom, Jesus Christ, is waiting for many paralytic men who come to his house so that 
their sins shall be forgiven and their name shall be written into the book of tree in the heaven. So what we need, four kind of man needs to carry the paralytic man. And today you and I are the bride introducing to the bridegroom to Jesus. And that's the balm of Gilead. You are the balm of Gilead. I am the balm of Gilead. God has given us in our, in our hand the balm of Gilead to heal the wounded soul. That was the cry of Prophet Jeremiah in, 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 in eighth chapter. He was weeping. He was crying. Is there is no bomb in Gilead? Is there is no physician there? Why then is there is no recovery for the health of the daughters of my people? Even though his heart is calling the people, my people, even though they're living in a sinful nature, even though they're turned away from God as a prophet standing in the gap, he is weeping and prophesying is there is no bomb in Gilead. Hallelujah. My friends today, you are a bomb to somebody in this land to heal their wounded souls. That you will restore somebody. You will heal somebody. And you will be a channel how the four men carried the paralytic man to bring a healing into his life. Not only his physical healing, but also his soul healing. In the same way that you will be a channel today, a bomb of Gilead, to someone who was going through a physical challenge or a wounded soul, and you will bring healing into their life. Hallelujah. You know, um, um, and um, I was just... Um, talking to uh, Dr. George, um, uh, messaging him. God gave me a word. I was asking um, what I'm going to sh share this afternoon, Lord. And all of a sudden, God just gave me a word. It's, it's partnering with God. You know, whenever we partner with God, there's an exchange is happening. What happening? Christ's nature is coming. Christ's character is coming. Christ's indwelling presence is coming in us. It encouraging, boosting us, our spirit, soul, and our body. John chapter 14, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. All the disciples, are, their hearts been troubled. Jesus is living. How we are going to move on? And Jesus said, I will give you the Holy Spirit. And John chapter 14, it says, you will do greater signs and wonders than me. When the double portion anointing came on Elisha, he did the double portion signs and wonders. You know, today as we are partnering with God, there's an exchange is happening. Christ's nature is coming. What is an exchange? You know, uh, as we are in the missions, you guys have, somebody will have a Euro dollars and American dollars. When you go to India, you're shopping somewhere. When you, sh when you give a, buy something, when you give a Euro dollar, the shopkeeper, then the cash counter, sir, what is this? Uh, we won't accept, sir, Euro dollars. We won't accept your American dollars. We want an Indian rupee so that we can give you what you purchase. So what do you have to do? You have to go to the bank, exchange the, your Euro dollars or your, your, uh, your American dollars into Indian money, then when you go to shop, when you give the money in rupee with a smiling face, oh, where, sir, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Germany. Oh, thanks for coming, visiting my land. Sir, where are you from, America? I want to take a selfie with you. <laughs> and you know, they with a smile, they exchange with your Indian rupee what you buy on the day. Hallelujah. In the same way, you know, as we are partnering with God, there is an exchange is happening from heaven to earth. 
and things are changing, atmosphere are changing. And that's the key of partnering with God. You know, I believe today, as we are partnering with God, hallelujah, things are going to be changed. You know, when we do a business, what happened? Uh, hey, uh, there's a 10, 10 people in the business. It's a million dollar business. They're getting a profit of uh, every month, 1 million. So they make a divide, dividend of 10 people getting 10,000, 10, uh, uh, 100,000, 100,000, 100,000. Because 10 are come together, they partner, they equally divide the profit. Amen. So I believe today, hallelujah, as we are partnering with God and God the, with his alignment and we are bringing heaven on earth in this earth. Hallelujah. Pastor, just play, play the, uh, the video. And you'll, it'll give me a, a couple of minutes to get us. Yes. Up. You know, this is an amazing story uh, of William Colgate. A lot of people know uh, uh, Colgate, is, it, it brings our teeth whiter when we get a big smile. Colgate paste helps us. <laughs> people ask me, where do you get, a, where you get your smile? I can say from Colgate. <laughs> <laughs> But this is an amazing story, you know, um, and after you watch this video, uh, I, I like to share how the seed uh, interceding today. You have certainly heard and you have bought one of these products. When you hear the word Colgate, it comes to mind the famous toothpaste. But behind his name, there's a story of faithfulness and partnership with God. William Colgate was born in England in 1973. To run away from poverty, his family traveled to the U.S. and they established themselves in a farm. But the work was hard and still they didn't recover financially speaking. That's when the young man decided to go to the city of New York. His mother was a Christian. And when he told him that, she opened the Bible and told him to read out loud the verse of Malachi 3.10. This was the only advice his mother gave to him before he traveled, that from everything that would come to his hand, he would separate the, the tithe to God. In the journey, he met the captain of the boat, who was also Christian, and they together made a prayer. And he told the young man, be a good man and give your heart to Christ. Give to God all that belongs to him. Make an honest work and God will prosper you. And he even prophesied someone will be the main manufacturer of soap in New York. Those words stayed, remained, in the mind of William Colgate. As he arrived in New York, he made a vow with God based on the vow of Jacob that he read in the Bible. If you will be with me and keep me this journey and give me bread to eat and clothes and in peace return to the house of my father, the Lord will be my God and this rock will be the house of God. And of everything that you give me, I'll give you the 10th. In 1804, he found a job in a manufacturer of soap. He began to attend a church in his neighborhood. And as soon as he received the first salary, he gave the tithe. Colgate had a spirit of entrepreneur and he called his boss's attention who decided to make a partnership with him. But the true partner of William was God who made him grow and prosper even more. In 1813, he bought the part that belonged to his partner and gave the name of the business Colgate. As God would honor him, he sought to honor God even more in his tithes. He would give 10% and then 20% and 30% and even more later on. The life of William Colgate was to serve the most high with his wealth. He invested millions in the work of God in sending missionaries all over the world, schools and universities, who taught the word of God. In 
200 years has gone by and God is still honoring the partnership that he did with God. Today, the brand name Colgate is known all over the world with a variety of products. Now, every time you see this name, you will not only remember the toothpaste, but also the man who had a partnership with God. Wow, amazing. Wow, what an amazing story. <clears throat> Testimony. You know, this man all the way on the boat, on the ship from England to America, he received a, like a prophetic word from the captain of the cruise. And then he responded that prophetic and the word even our, uh, his, his mother gave. And um, I was just um, reading some of the mission story, how Colgate helped in the missionaries and also translating the Bible. One of the missionary from Boston, I believe in 18, 1800, um, somewhere 1893 or 83, not exactly year, of, um, but he was about to go to India. He was landed in India and he could not be there. He never gave up and he took a diversion to Burma, Myanmar, today the country name called Myanmar, Burma. And he started the local language, learning, reading, and he started translating the Bible from English to Burmese language. And to help translate and publish the Bible, Colgate is the man who sponsored the Baptist, that time, uh, all the mission field, they, they don't know where the money comes from. And the money came from William Colgate organization, his company. Because William Colgate was a bomb of Gilead, sending money into mission. And there, Adoniram Jetson able to translate the Bible and also publish the Bible. And because of that seed today, how many millions of people in Burma have the Bible in their local language? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The seed is still interceding, one man's seed. It's all begin with partnering with God. It's all begin with partnering with God. Amen. You know, one of the proverbs, if there is a light in the soul, there will be beauty in the person. If there is a beauty in the person, there will be harmony in the house. If there is harmony in the house, there will be order in the nation. If there is order in the nation, there will be peace in the world. Amen. So my friends, whoever watching this or whoever looking for a sign or a healing or a miracle, now is the time to connect your soul, to connect a new beginning with our master, the creator of heaven and earth, partnering with him, and as you're partnering with him, you're not going to be the same. Your life is going to be turned from darkness to light. And he is going to bless you in a new way. As you're partnering, there's an exchange is happening. There's a new beginning is happening. There's a new hope is happening. It's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late because God is working on your behalf. He's looking at you when my son will return back. He's looking at you to give something 
to heal your wounded soul. Hallelujah. It's all responding to the prophetic. It's all your partnering with God. So I pray, Lord, this afternoon, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as prophet Jeremiah cried, is there is no bomb in Gilead? Is there is no physician there? Why then there is no recovery for the health of the daughter of my people? And I speak, Lord, right now, you're sending the bomb of Gilead, that we are the bomb through Jesus, through the Holy Spirit. We're going to bring the aroma, the fragrance, and that's going to heal many wounded souls. Use us, Lord. Send us, Lord, where you want to be used by. Use, use, where you want to use us, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I speak healing, Lord. And I speak, my friends, whoever going through a tough time right now, Lord, knowingly, unknowingly. Only they, only, Lord, um, uh, uh, um, uh, you know them, Lord. And I speak a healing right now. And I speak a healing right now, Lord. And I prophesy right now, the dry bones are coming alive. 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 The winter is gone. The spring is ending. They're going to walk into the, in the nice paved road, looking at the daffodils on the side of the road, just gazing at them, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, also we pray for the country who has been going through a tough time, Lord, even in India, Lord. And I pray that the bomb of Gilead will shine in that land to heal the people from the broken wounded, to heal the people from the physical healing and the spirit healing and the soul healing is happening, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Show your glory, Lord. Rise many prophets, Lord. Rise more servant, Lord. Rise more intercessor, like Anna, Lord, standing in the gap, interceding, bringing healing into the wounded whole souls. Have your way, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you the glory and the honor. Thank you, Lord. Once again, you're renewing our spirit, soul, our mind, and our thought. Knowingly, unknowingly, if you are, if, if we are not partnering with you in every area, and I surrender also, Lord, that we partner 100% with you, we'll hear from you, and then we just move on. Have your way, Lord. I give all the glory and the honor, Lord. And I pray for, Lord, all our CMM family right now around the world, Lord. And thank you, Lord. There's a new partnership of exchanging is happening in a new way. There's a new partnership of exchanges is happening in a new way to advancing the kingdom of God in a new way to bring the heaven on earth, Lord. And a lot of things has been incubated, Lord. And I release, hallelujah. The things are manifesting. Healing is happening. Signs and wonders is happening. Miracles are happening. And salvation is happening. Restoration is happening. New beginning in the relationship is happening. And all the emptiness are turning into a, a surprising gift. Thank you, Lord. Use us, Lord, for your glory, Lord. That we will finish well together for that eternity which is waiting for us, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Show your glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name. 
Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Prakash. That was powerful. To really Amen. Feel, still do the presence of the Lord, the anointing, the impartation. People are so hungry for the Lord and we can't get enough. That we're addicted to his glory. And we see this darkness in the world and the plague and the lockdowns. And Lord, show us how to, to articulate, to share your fire, your passion, your love, your fire of hope to give into the dark world, Lord, to get people to see in a different way, to open the eyes of our heart, like you did the servants of Elijah, to, to see what their great army, there was many more with them than those that are against them, Father. Open our eyes to see your angelic armies, to behold the glory and how have you prepared everything by the completed work in the cross of Jesus. Thank you so much, brother. I want to open up, does anybody have uh, questions or comments or prophetic words for Prakash too? Please share, just unmute yourself or raise your hand if you have something you'd like to share. You're more than welcome. Cindy, looks like you got something. Prakash, I just want to thank you and what an amazing revelation um, about those four men. I just watched a movie called The Chosen, and that was part of the, one of the latest episodes of when they lowered them down. But I never had that beautiful understanding of the unity and the knitting together and the four different purposes of those men. And when you were speaking, the Lord dropped something into my spirit when you were speaking about Pharisees and fault finding. I never quite understood it, but the Lord just, just said to me, like, when you were speaking, you blessed me because I got a revelation from the Lord regarding a pharisaical spirit is also a fault finding spirit. So thank you for giving up your time. And Paul and I really enjoyed this. Thank you. Man, thank you, Sister Cindy. Thank you, Cindy. Amen. Yeah, while you were speaking, Prakash, it reminded me of a book I read um, a few weeks ago by Andrew Womack called Spirit, Soul, and Body. And he talked in there about that, um, you know, we can have faith, but we can also have unbelief and the importance of being single-minded. Like we read in the book of James that a, a double-minded man achieves nothing. And when we're praying for the sick, for example, you know, we're, we're praying in faith. And so we have our faith. But then in the back of our mind or the side of our minds, we're distracted with peer pressure or what if what if he's this person's not healed and somebody sees me or what if I'm saying the wrong thing or we question or we have doubt and unbelief of how we can limit God. And it's yeah. a childlike faith that will allow us to see the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Any wow. other questions or comments? Yeah, I got a... A very short word, uh, Prakash. Uh -huh. The word is this. Go west, young man. Go with your? Go west. Go west. Like go west. You're in the east, yes. go west. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I receive that. Go west. Hmm. I'm going west, brother. Uh, next month, uh, I'm traveling to... Washington State and Oregon State. I've never been there. Mm. So I'm going to the West. That's as West as you can get in, in America. Other than Hawaii <laughs> or Alaska. Mm -hmm. That's way out West. And those states need the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Do they ever. Can I short, shortly pray for you, uh, Prakash? Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Mm. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this wonderful man of God that you brought uh, Prakash as a, um, uh, a miracle man, <clears throat> a man of God, truly an ambassador of the kingdom of God uh, to uh, the United States. And I uh, see him as a uh, eagle and he is um, um, his, um, 
man, how do you call that? The, the, his wings, they are waving and um, he's taking air again and he is going to new places and he's uh, dropping the, the message of the, of the gospel. Also dropping um, uh, booms of the, of the gospel that will explode and make uh, impacts, make a change, will uh, break uh, strongholds and make a new a room, new uh, place where the gospel can go in, in uh, places that uh, used to be very tough and dry, as you prophesied tonight, that uh, the dry bones will live again. Amen. So we prophesy um, mm. uh, new life over the United States, uh, new life to these places where used to be life, new life in the name of Jesus, and you, uh, Lord, I thank you that you will use Prakash as a, a carrier of, uh, of water, that he will uh, uh, bring rain from your, uh, from your glory and for your kingdom. New life will grow again in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I just see that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Young. That was Thank powerful. You, great prayer. Great Amen. words. And great words to go west. Amen. Okay. Anyone else with a question or comment or a word? This has been so... So good. Uh, Emily, go ahead. Thank you so much. That, that that was very powerful. I really liked the way that you related everything and took it back to sunship. Because that speaks to me uh, of a lot of relationship. But I was just going to say, I, you, um, you, you have a great ability to um, stand in the middle of a storm. In life and and, and in what things 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 bring you, I, 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 I see the presence of the sun, like the, the light of the sun, with you in the midst of the rain. But then I also see you in the middle of this storm, uh, taking your um, hammer and nailing it down and getting down to the ground and staking the ground in the middle of the storm. The storms are not going to move you. You're going to move the storms. The storms are not going to move you. And so I just, um, I just don't even think that you even realize the ability that you have in, in, in the area as much as it is there because this is, the storms are, are around, but you're just staking it and staking it and staking it and, and you're not moved and you're going to help a lot of other people in the area to be able to walk in the power and the authority of God in the middle of any storm and everything that, that that's coming upon um, our nation and in, in the world. So. Amen. Amen. Wow. Thank I received that. Amen. That was powerful. As Emily was um, sharing, Prakash, I was seeing you like an archer and you were shooting arrows out of your quiver behind your back rapidly. And then you were hitting the mark, the bullseye, the center of the target each time, and you were able to do it pretty rapid fire. And then I saw you doing it with your eyes closed, with eyes of faith, that you didn't have to look with your natural eyes. You could see with your spiritual eyes and hit the mark. And then I saw many people lined up who were hungry to learn from you, hungry to learn how to hit the mark for themselves, and that you were very patiently, like with a kind, patient father's heart, instructing them on how to, to hold the arrow, how to pull the arrow, how to take care of their bow and arrow and their tools, and to be able to also hit the mark as they were growing and maturing, even right before our eyes. And so you have a, a lot of uh, lessons and wisdom to teach, and the anointing of how to hit the mark the high calling of Jesus Christ. And I see you teaching many people. And I see the technology that's available today that you know, the world thinks that we have uh, um, been forced into lockdown when really it's forced us through a narrow way in greater presence and intimacy with the Lord in our devotional time and meeting and fellowshipping together. But I see the Lord opening doors for you uh, through technology also to be able to, to offer a systematic teaching and strong foundations of the word to be able to instruct people so that they can hit the mark for themselves. And Cindy has something after that. Wow, I see that. 
Prakash, I saw the same thing George did where you were teaching multitudes. As a matter of fact, before George began to speak, I got this thought that because of your love for the Lord, people will be drawn to you. But it was almost like a warning because um, Jesus only did what we saw the Father do. And we know that he walked past many and they didn't get healed, but he did what the Father saw. Uh, to do told him to do and I felt the same for you that many are going to be drawn to you and your love for Christ is so beautiful but you want to be careful that you don't get worn down and that you're if, if the Lord says don't do that or do this it's not lack of compassion on your part it's simply obedience hmm. does that make any sense yeah yeah mm -hmm. okay Excellent. Thank you, Cindy. We love you, brother. And, you know, the remnant may be smaller than we thought it was a couple of years ago, but still Gideon defeated the enemy as he listened to the Lord and he sent soldiers home and ended up winning the victory with only 300. And there is a, a broadening, widening chasm between the lukewarm Christians and those that are on fire. And Jesus said, either be hot or cold, because if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. And um, we see this um, chasm of apostasy spreading. And so we have to intentionally spend time with the Lord to hunger, to live for him, to join with, partner with what the Lord is doing. But it's such a time of, of opportunity. And I even see um, you helping to start businesses and giving counsel and wisdom to business owners, witty inventions, creative ideas for people to do it. And then the, that you'll be partnering with others who are partnering with the Lord. And I see that really for all of us here as we learn how to partner with the Lord first. And then he introduces us into partnering with his body and the body becoming one with Jesus Christ always as the head, the captain of the host of the army. So we're in for surprising, mysterious, uncertain times, but that's how the Lord sharpens our faith and hones our character. I love what you said about the importance of character, that our gifts can make room, but it's our, our character that can help us to finish strong. In fact, it's our character is the only thing that can lead us to finish strong. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, so thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Well, um, God bless you, brother. And thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for praying and waiting and asking the Lord what he would have you to speak about. And this is a very much needed lesson. I needed to hear it. I'm sure that we all did. And it helps us, you know, in the way of iron sharpening iron Amen. for us to go higher together and to learn how to become one with the Lord. But first we have to partner with him and we have to take risks by faith. Even if we become a fool for Jesus, I'm happy to do that as long as we're doing what he says and what he does uh, as far as the Father telling Jesus and telling us. So God bless you and thank you, everyone. And we just pray for continued ongoing encounters with his angels and the angelic army and seeing more miracles in the days ahead. Like we read in Isaiah 60 as the darkness spreads and increases and darkness covers the seas of the earth like the water covers the seas, that the glory will shine brighter and brighter on us as we keep our eyes on the Lord in faith, not fear. So be encouraged, everyone, and we love you, and we'll see you soon. Thank you Amen. so much. Amen. Bless you. Thank you, Dr. Bye -bye. Josh. Thank you. Bye-bye.